start recording. And so, um, as I mentioned before, the thing that's new for 2.20, um, is this thing called the Hepburn Protocol. And even though this monstrosity just looks awful, really all it is is like if you do a Google search or any kind of, of search for Heparin protocol, you'll see this steps one through 15 listed out there. And then you're just like, you're not necessarily following the steps, but you're utilizing the information from these steps to get to the answers you're looking for. And the answers you're looking for are what is your bolus? And what is your infusion rate given the data that's here? So the only thing that really changes on this at this point is the patient's weight. So you'll be given a patient weight in pounds, and then you have to convert it to kilograms, and then you solve for the heparin protocol. And what I'll do is I'll go through the example one that's here, and then I'll create a new one and have you um review it and see if you can do it yourself just as an extra test so i'll just create like a, a different scenario for you to look at so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna zoom back in but i just wanted you to see like you have all these steps the ones that are crossed out they're crossed out intentionally because it's just to let you know like when you see this and it's not crossed out that you don't need to worry about filling in those blanks those are just telling you you know, those would be filled in for you if you had it in the um, um, in the room in which you're doing these calculations or or following these orders. That's just telling you what to do. Do your neuro checks, do your GAIAC stool sample, do your um, APTT. Like it's just a, it's just telling you the process. But what we care about is what's highlighted. Um, and so that's what we're going to focus on. All right. So let me zoom in. So typically you'll know that you're doing a um, a flow or a, a heparin protocol question because it'll start off with protocol and then it'll tell you to bolus the patient with heparin 80 units per kilogram body weight and then to start a drip at 18 units per kilogram per hour. And then it'll also say to answer the questions, usually it's two, below the protocol, okay? Um, it'll give you the patient's weight the weight will be in pounds and you just have to convert it to um, kilograms. I already did that for this one. So all I did was take 156 divided by 2.2, round to the nearest 10th, you get 70.9 kilograms. Then you look at the protocol. Step one just tells you what we just did. Convert the patient's weight in pounds to kilograms, done. Step two gives you what you have available to run the heparin protocol. You have heparin, 25,000 units in 250 milliliters half normal saline. So that's your IV bag. And you're going to use that available information when you're calculating your flow rate, milliliters per hour. Then you have a bolus dose. The bolus dose is strength, 1,000 units per milliliter. So again, it's just giving you information of what you have on hand and what to do with it. So you have a bolus dose, 1,000 units per milliliter. The um, step 10, so I'm skipping three through nine because that doesn't mean anything for us. Step 10 just reiterates what you're starting with. Bolus with 80 units per kilogram and then start your drip at 18 units per kilogram per hour. It's repeating what it said at the beginning of the protocol. So if for some reason it was missing, you have it there um, as a uh, to review. Now, these other things are just after six hours, so after they've been on the initial infusion, you're going to check their clotting time, and then you're going to reevaluate. And then then that's where steps 11 through 15 come in. I have a feeling you won't need to worry about that for the actual test. I think you're just going to be calculating your initial bolus and your initial um, infusion rate. But I gave you examples of this just in case that does get asked. So that way you at least have had some practice with it. Okay. So the, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this and then we'll start over. Even if you've seen this a couple of times, you'll at least, um, like I said, the trick to these is just practicing them over and over and over and over. So you get kind of like the flow of it down. Um, and then that way, you're not making, you know, silly mistakes. You, you're you pretty much going to follow the same flow. You're going to take the patient's weight in kilograms, multiply it by whatever 
uh, you know, units per kilogram or units per kilogram per hour, and then um, convert the units per hour or the units to milliliters or milliliters per hour. And that's what we're going to do. So to calculate the bolus, we need two pieces of information. We need the uh, patient's weight in kilograms. So that was the 70.9. And we need the bolus dose information, which was 80 units per kilogram. So in step one, we're eliminating kilogram and we're getting to units. So I'm going to take 70.9 times 80. And I'm going to get 5,672. Five thousand six hundred seventy-two units. The next thing is we don't want units; we want milliliters. So we're going to convert units to milliliters. Now, the next thing is this is where it's helpful to kind of know what you're looking for. What are we calculating? We're calculating the bolus. Okay. It wants to know the bolus in milliliters. So I need to have a way to convert units to milliliters. So we go to our available. It's the same thing you would do when you were calculating how many milliliters of Augmentin you would give or how many milliliters of, you know, uh, Dilantin you would give. It's You're going to do the same process, but you have two availables. You have the IV solution, and then you have off to the side, this is how I imagine it, off to the side in a little vial, you have a bolus dose available. Since we're calculating bolus, that's the information you want to use. You want to use the bolus dosage strength. Don't use the IV because the IV is for flow rates. The bolus dosage strength is what you want to use for calculating the bolus. So coming back down here, 1,000 units per milliliter. We get rid of units. When we're all said and done, we'll be in milliliters. And you get, I'm going to round this to the nearest tenth, 5.7 milliliters. Any questions on how I got to the bolus? I have a question. Where did you get that 70.9 kilogram again? Can I ask a question? All right, give me just a minute because um, there's some overlap in the uh, thing here. Oh, okay, here we go. Sorry, just paused on me. Just give me a second because I can't see anything yet, so... Okay, here we go. All right, I think we're back. 
All right. So yeah, so um, yep. I don't know when that message came in, Sabina, but um, yeah, the kilograms is coming from converting the patient's weight in pounds to kilograms, if that was what you were asking. So I apologize. Looks like I don't even know when this crashed, but still recording. So we're going to keep going. So my question was, if you had any questions about how I got the bolus dosage strength. So I'll give you a second to look at that. And let me know if you have any questions on how I got there. Okay. Um, you can stop me at any time, just so you know. So if there's a time you like, um, you want me to go back to something, we can. So let's go ahead and move on to the infusion rate. So the infusion rate um, is going to be using, again, the patient. Same patient, same weight. So the 70.9 kilograms. And we're going to multiply now by the rate. And the rate that they give us is the 18 units per kilogram per hour. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to multiply those 70.9 kilograms by the 18 units per kilogram per hour. Because that's what it told us to do. Just following the protocol. Get rid of kilograms, 70.9 times 18. So let me pull that up. And you get 1,276.2. And that's units per hour. Now, the question says how many ml per hour so we need to convert units to milliliters. So just like we did in the bolus question, and you might even be tempted to use the bolus, this is where you want to use what you have available in the form of the IV. So going back to the protocol, it tells us that we have 25,000 units in 250 milliliters, half normal saline. So that's the two data points that we're going to use. So for the units, 25,000. For the mill, 250. After it's all said and done, after I round to the nearest tenth, I'm going to get 12.8 milliliters per hour. So the trick with these is to practice. And the only thing that really changes with these is the patient's weight. So I always tell students, use your weight, use your significant other's weight, children's weight, parents' weight, make up an entirely different weight and go with that. Put it in pounds, practice converting pounds to kilograms, round that number to the nearest 10th, and then solve for the bolus and solve for the infusion. And you don't round in the middle of the equation, the 1,276.2 units. Right. I just left that alone. So you don't need to round that. Um, I would just leave it alone. If you had if you had just rounded it to 1,276, you would still come up with the same answer. So it doesn't really change anything if you did do that. But I would just say, as long as it's down to the 10th, which it should be, um, just leave it as it is. Some people just put in all the numbers and don't even stop at that point. I just stop there just arbitrarily just to show you that you're getting to a units and then converting those units to milliliters. Okay. Good question. All right. Now, I don't think you're going to get this question, but if you do, the second part of this is what's down here. And I'm, I'm not going to go through it. I'm just going to show you what I did. But sometimes they'll give you like, and usually when you get this question, it's going to be one question. It'll be like question 22, heparin protocol, and, and then answer for and solve for bolus and solve for uh, infusion rate. And so you have to answer two questions. 
bolus and infusion rate, it counts as one question. So if you get them both wrong, you've only missed one. And if you miss one and get one right, you still miss the question. And if the only way you can get full credit is if you get both parts correct. A, you might see this, but I doubt it. I don't think I've seen it at all in all the semesters that we've been doing the heparin protocol, but I gave it to you as an extra challenge. So it tells you after six hours, the patient has an APTT of 43 seconds. This is where steps 11 through 15 in the protocol come into play because you can see here, this is if the APTT is blah, or in this range, then you're going to do what it says next to it. So the example said 43 seconds. That's this part right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to follow the instructions. So the instructions tell us to rebolus with 40 and then to increase the rate by two. So the trick is a knowing to multiply by 40 instead of 80 for your bolus, divide by 1,000, and to increase your rate. So your rate was 18. Now it's going to be increased by 2 to 20. And then just do your, your calculations based off of that. So let me show you what I already worked through with this 70.9. So I take the patient's weight, 70.9 kilograms. I multiply by the... 40 units this time, so because it's the new bolus, I get this unit measure, divide by 1,000, and they get a final answer of 2.8 milliliters. So all we did was we adjusted based off of the data saying that their clotting is still not ideal. They're still clotting too quickly, but so but we want so we want to make a change. We want to add a little bit a boost of heparin in addition to adding um, and increasing the infusion rate. So they're getting more heparin um, because they're clearly not responding as favorably to the initial. We don't know what their original APTT was, but this we're just going off of where we started. Then for the new infusion rate, again, same patient, same weight, 70.9 kilograms. You were at, or they were at 18 units per kilogram per hour. It was, you were told to increase it by two. So it goes from 18 to 20. And then we get our, four, we get our units per hour. We convert units per hour to milliliters per hour. Again, rounding to the nearest tenth. So given that, I'm going to give you a scenario. And then I want you to attempt it on your own. And then you can just, type in your answer into the um, into the chat, like just send it as a direct message. Um, and let me let me make the question because I have a couple of examples here. So like I'll get a new one. It's that way. It's fresh. You can see I've done quite a few of these. So we'll do this one. And all I'm gonna do is change the weight of the patient, okay? I don't know if this is going to let me do this. Good. Good. All right. So don't do not do anything yet. Let me uh, get rid of the writing here. Okay. All right. So let's make this, um, let's just say 242. So what I want you to do is, first of all, I don't know why that changed that to that, but we'll just do A. Change that to, yeah, that's fine. So if you want to do all four, go ahead and do all four, but just focus right now on A and B. Get a bolus and get a uh, infusion rate and put your answer into the chat. And I'll give you a little, I'll give you a few minutes to kind of work on that. And also, if you don't know, that's an acceptable answer. Just say, I have no idea. Type it into the chat. Good. Looks like everyone's getting what I got. So I'm going to go ahead and put the answers down. So you should get 8.8. .8, and you should get 19.8 .8 mil per hour. 
you should get 4.4 because it's exactly half. So even if you didn't do any of the math, and then you should get 22 ml per hour. John. So like I said, the, the secret to these heparin protocol questions is just to practice them. So I try to give you some a variety of different scenarios so you can just go through. If you were to download my um, my practice uh, questions here, when you open it up, you sh should be able to just go in and delete my writing um, unless you just want to keep it off to the side um, so that you or at least have the answer nearby. Um, Cause unfortunately I didn't create keys for this. I just kind of kept creating more and more practice problems. So I'll try and correct for that in the spring when we do these reviews again. So, so yeah, so those, those are your heparin uh, protocol questions. Like I said, that's the big thing that's new for 220, 230, but um, take a moment, review the other questions. If there's anything else you want to see or practice, let me know. Um, and then we'll, we'll do it. I'm sorry. Can you go over part B on this one again? Sure. I'm not, I'm not sure immediately like how to set up the problem. Um, okay. so tell me, so I'm going to ask far I got? You, yeah. Tell me like, where do you think we should start? Uh, I got the patient's weight in kilograms again, which is the 110 kilograms. Um, and then I multiplied it uh, by 80 units per kilogram. Well, hold on. You said part B, right? Yeah. So we're, we're doing the infusion right now. Right. But did you say 80 or 18? I said 80. Okay. Yeah. So you want to use the infusion rate. Oh, okay. Yeah, only use 80 for the bolus. And since we're doing the infusion rate, that's why you use the 18. That's why you choose between those two. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So then if we were to multiply that 18 times 110... 1980 and then we need to convert that to okay so all right uh, okay wait i see how this is going to go then so you can multiply that by um by one you basically you could divide it by a thousand but you could set it up as a thousand units per milliliter and only only use the bolus dose strength for the bolus yeah so we're, because we're doing the drip we want to use this so if you're calculating bolus use the bolus dosage strength but if you're calculating the infusion you want to use the iv Okay. And that is so that that difference is not a thousand. That's why. So, like, if you did it by a thousand, then you would get 1.98, and that would be too slow of an infusion. Too little of an infusion, I guess. So, you would do 25,000 units over 250 mLs and then just work it out. You got it. Okay. Now the two fifty over twenty five thousand is the same as one over a hundred, mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to write. So this is what you're going to use for your infusion. This is what you're going to use for your bolus. And I'm glad you said that because that is a common thing where students will kind of inadvertently pick the wrong um starting point or even the wrong available because there are there's two orders and there's two available they're asking you to calculate a bolus 
and they're asking you to calculate an infusion rate using an available bolus and an available IV. And so it does add an element of challenge. So I'm glad that you are asking the questions you're asking. Um, and you said I can find more of these practice problems where again? So I have, uh, I've on this particular review. So on the, um, the shared one drive folder for the 24 fall to 20 to 30 nursing review, I create, I, because this is the fourth review session, I've done this a couple of times. So you'll see it like listed there a handful of times. Um, so there's, a, it looks like there's at least four questions that's in addition to the original question 25 that was listed there. So I just kept adding a few more. Um, so they're in the shared folder. Okay. Do you have, do you have access to that? Uh, I'm at work right now. I can't okay. tell. Um, well, it, it should be in the email in which you got the, um, the link to come to the zoom, but I will put my, email address in the chat and then if you didn't get it just email me and i will forward it to you okay thank you you're welcome all right so like i said um the heparin protocol is pretty much the new the new kid on the block as far as uh uh questions go so but Take a moment if you if you have your um, your uh, packet and you want to if there's any particular type of question you want to see we can work through them. If that's all you needed to see, then you're welcome to to jump off whatever you want to do. And if you have questions between now and your test next week, just email me and I can um, I can respond and let you know. Um, and usually I can just email uh, an answer for you. Uh, or at least how to set up a particular problem if you're struggling with it. But I will tell you, I'll warn you, I will always ask you, well, what did you do? What did you try? Um, that way we can both be on the same page. A3. Sure. All right, so drop rate. So what I'll do is um, I'll work through 17 again, and then I'll create a uh, separate practice problem, and I'll have you try it out, okay? Okay. Good. Uh -oh. oh, yeah, that's good. Okay. So with this question a lot of times the tricky part is what information to use and what information to ignore and so what we're going to use is anytime we're calculating um drop a drop rate we need two pieces of information we need flow rate and we need the drop factor those two pieces of information will give us will give you the drop rate the flow rate is typically milliliters per hour, but it could be milliliters per minute. The drop factor, which is always given to you, will be drops per milliliter. And then your drop rate is in drops per minute. And it even tells you that when you're calculating it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for my flow rate. So I look for volume, 75 milliliters, and I look for time, 30 minutes. So 75 milliliters, 30 minutes. And then I look for my drop factor, it tells me 10. Before you do any calculations, you already know you're in the right units because you have drops and you have minutes. So then you just take your 75 times 10 and divide by 30. and you're gonna get 25 drops per minute. You'll also notice that in the, when solving this, I didn't do anything with this 200 milligrams. And that's because you don't need to do anything with the 200 milligrams. You just need to know that you're giving them the right medication 
But the question is asking, what is the flow rate? So the flow rate is irrelevant to what type of medication. That's your responsibility to make sure you're administering the correct medication, but you also need to set the flow rate. So it doesn't matter if it's solumedrol, augmentin, gentamicin, dilantin, whatever happens to be infusing, it doesn't really matter to the strength when you're calculating the flow rate. If it asked you about the strength, then you'd be asking, it'd be asking you a different question. So just, just so you know, that's why we ignore the 200 milligrams. So let's do a separate question here. Let's say it's a um, 250 milliliter and it's gonna infuse over, mm, let's say, two and a half hours and the drop factor is 15. I don't I don't know what's gonna happen with this, but we're just gonna try something out. So try and solve this and see if you get um see if you get the answer or the same answer I get. Five. 20, 25. Okay. That, hopefully I, I wonder if that worked out the same way. It wasn't intentional, but let's see. So 250 uh, times 15 divided by 2.5 and divided by 60. And yep. Okay, good. Yep. Same thing I got, 25. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I couldn't hear you when you first came on because I think there was a delay in the, uh, when you unmuted, so. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. All right. No, it sounds like you got it. Is that enough of a refresher for you? Yeah. And then I was just wondering if we could do one similar to like 22, 23, yeah. or 24. I mean, they're all kind of similar. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So this is, so part of this is what I was doing with the, um, the heparin uh, protocol where you're ba what this is basically asking you to do is convert units per hour to milliliters per hour. And so all you're going to, so my strategy is this, I will um, take the units per hour and then just convert it to milliliters per hour. Um, so some students like to do this a little bit differently, but that's, that's usually like the strategy I start off with, meaning I'll start off with just writing out what it gives me the 8,000 units per hour. And then I want to convert units per hour to milliliters per hour. So I'm just going to use what they give me in the, in the IV. Here's units, here's ML. They tell me 20,000 units and they tell me 500 ML. And so I'm just going to fill in those gaps there. And then 8,000 times 500 divided by 20,000 will give me 200 milliliters per hour. And then I, I work through this one a couple of times. Sometimes these questions get asked. Sometimes it's just a matter of refreshing, which is why you're asking it. Um, and then sometimes, you know, you have, um, and I try and give you extra practice with it. Um, so I'll just, I'll blank this out, even though you can see the answer already. Um, let me, I'm just going to change, I'm just going to change this real quick. And we'll just say, um, let's say it was in 70, 7,500 units per hour. Let's say it was uh, 2,500 units per hour. Um, I'll keep it at 250 ml. Um and 25,000 units. So go ahead and see if you can solve that one for practice and then um, go from there.
I got 25 again. <laughs> different than uh that's fine that's at least different than the 200 milliliters before so um and then i saw that uh johnny and alina got that as well so i'm assuming that's correct um so i'll just plug it into my calculators to double triple cons uh check so 2500 uh times 250 divided by 25000 and i get 25 as well so yeah, you're doing that right. Okay, and then just exam again for this one next week, right? Hold on, you both were talking at the same time, so. Okay, I was just gonna ask, um, for the one like number 20, you divide it by like 60 divided by five, 60 divided by 10. You, I always mix this up. Is it the higher or the lower number that you want? Like the answer to be the lower or higher? You wanna choose the strongest concentration. So which, which of these is the strongest concentration? So you have to divide it and figure out what the biggest, is it the biggest number that you end up getting? No, you don't have to do that the strongest concentration is going to be whichever is the highest number per milliliter. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? So no, it's easier than I was making it. Yeah. And then all you have to do is take your 60 divided by 20. And then that is, so that ends up being the smaller number, but it's only small because you took, you chose the strongest concentration. Okay. I have a feeling that they've gotten rid of that question. Cause it's, um, it's just a bad question. Both of these questions are just, they're, they're supposed to be reconstitution questions that just are not ideal questions, but I don't, I don't know if they've changed it or not, but anyways. Okay. And then you said the chance of like the part B for the heparin that we were doing mm -hmm. is like pretty slow or pretty low like to calculate it after the APTT Correct. is like yeah. 43 seconds. Okay. From what I understand, you're probably just going to do the um, the initial bolus and then the initial infusion. But I wanted to give you additional practice, A, just for the practice of it, and B, just in case they asked it. So, Okay. All right. That's all my questions. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Johnny, go ahead. I'm okay now. Thank you. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah. So we, we have a few more minutes left. So if you have any other questions, shoot, if you're good to go, then you're, you're, you're welcome to, to, to jump off whatever you prefer. Kind of stuff, right? but it, they just change only the number, right? Right. It's going to be similar. So they might use different, um, different medications, um, mm -hmm. different labels, different numbers, but the strategy is still the same. How you would solve the types of questions, they're all still the same. Yeah. This one is for Monday, right? Uh, if that's when you have it. I don't know when you have your test, but if you have it on Monday, then yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.